will now uh, we will have uh, Lucas Tesky talk, and he's right here. He's gonna talk about reverse hey. engineering satellites. Hi, Tesk. <laughs> hi all. So hi everyone. Uh, I'm talking about uh, satellite communications reverse engineering. Um, I mean, the, this topic is very wide, so the the talk will be more or less an incentive, so you guys can start like uh, playing with it. So because every every time I try to give a presentation about uh, reverse engineering satellite communications. Or it takes too much time, or no one like um, uh, focus in that because it's it's a very dense uh, subject. So it, it's not easy like to get like a presentation and then just understand everything. So the the idea here will be like um, making an incentive and give you some directions so you can start by yourself. Okay, so let's start about me. I'm Lucas Teske, uh, and the social networks, you can find me as a RacerXDL, Tasker, Cybernetic Lover, or anything else. I, I usually like programming, I, games, fire, lightning, basically anything related to science, I, I'm there. Uh, I went to university twice uh, for the University of Sao Paulo. I make two years of each, but then I haven't finished it. Uh, I made the systems of information with sort of uh, computer science, and I made physics as well. Okay, both at the University of São Paulo. I live. I currently live in São Paulo, uh, in Brazil, and I work for Pride Security as a hardware security consultant. Okay, so I I, I do several other stuff besides hardware in Pride Security, but nowadays I'm I'm doing hardware stuff. So let, let's start first by the motivations, okay? So what was my motivations to start that? And basically everything from the hardware to the software in the telecommunication systems are basically all follows the same direction. Uh, there, there are some differences between like uh, a chip uh, remote control to like the Starlink or something like that. But the fundamentals are the same. I mean, you have to modulate our radio signal to transmit the data, and in the other side, you need to receive it. Um, even for the modulations that you use for the encodings, for the error correction, and things like that, it's more or less the same for mostly of the. Um, uh, most of the, of the radio frequency stuff. Uh, the space telecommunication has like a, a, a common basis specification. So they usually use like CCSDS or something, uh, something close to CCSDS, which is a specification on how to do space telemetry. Uh, so th that makes easier to reverse engineer because you know it's more or less the CCSDS and maybe some, some stuff change it. And usually when they change, there is a technical reason. It's not like just an obfuscation or something like that. So if it's a technical re reason, you can also uh, get to the same conclusion and know what the difference is. Uh, there is not much about the dig digital signal processing online. I mean, nowadays there are more. Uh, when I started, there wasn't much, especially about satellites. Uh, the people that knew how to do well, kept for them. Um, so for me, at least that's the motivation to create new content where there isn't. Uh, there is also cheap SDRs, software divided radios. We will talk about that later, but there are several of them. You know, you have like the RTR SDR, which is the most common one. You have the Lime SDR, you have the Hacker Ref, you have the blader ref you have several other uh radios that you can use for that and the image from weather satellites which is the focus uh here it's it, it shows the beauty of our planet i mean uh it's it's hard to describe how was the feel when i first received an satellite image and it's fun i mean 
it's fun knowing that uh, something in orbit of Earth is transmitting something I'm receiving at my, my house, decoding and getting all the data. I mean, at least for me, it's really fun to do that. So let's start with software-defined radio. Uh, what is a software-defined radio? I mean, the name is pretty, pretty direct, right? Uh, it's a radio that's defined by software, but how can you define a radio by software? And basically, this is a software-defined radio. Don't get scared. Uh, it's, it's not that complicated. It looks like, but it's not. So th this is the e schematics for the RTL-SDR. Uh, okay, so you have two, two, uh, two parts, which mainly all the SDRs have, which is the tuner, which is the same tuner that the RTV has for like broadcast or something like that. And you have like a uh, demodulator or ADA, a, a fancy ADC, which is analog to digital converter. Okay. Uh, the turner part, what it does, it gets like uh, a signal that, for example, your TV channel or I think it's like 400 megahertz. But the actual channel data, it's only from like uh, 398 megahertz to 3401. Okay, so you have like uh, three or four megahertz of actual channel data. But if you are gonna use like a, a, a digital to analog, uh, analog to digital converter, you would need to receive like 400 megahertz, right? which is a very expensive digi uh, analog to digital converter. So what the tuner does, it does like a, a very simple operation that gets like this signal at 400 megahertz, which spans from like 399 to 401 and moves to the zero hertz or for like the two megahertz. Because then your signal is from zero to two megahertz and not three ninety nine to four zero one, and that's that's better because then I don't need an uh, analog to digital converter that runs like uh, four hundred megahertz. I just need something like that runs like four or five megahertz, which is way cheaper. So the only thing that Turner does is just shift the the spectrum around. Okay, so just imagine that it moves the frequency, the, the signal from one frequency to another frequency. And it does that by using a mixer. Okay, so uh, on the left side, you have like this small square, which is saying Raphael R820 T2 turner, which is the turner for the uh, uh, RTL SDR. And it can shift anything from 24 megahertz to 1.7 gigahertz. Okay, I will not go into details. It has some filters, some amplifi uh, amplifiers and things like that because it's required. Every process in the signal is lossy, so it needs to recover from that. Then after that, you just like put in a normal ADC. For example, I think more, some of them that, that are watching now already play with like an Arduino or anything like that, which has an ADC which is an analog to digital converter. It's basically the same, uh, but it's it's usually works at a higher frequency, okay? And what what the, the RTL SDR have is a 28.8 megahertz um, ADC. So it basically can read like from zero to 28 megahertz and it has some processing inside. So it generates a complex signal. That, that's that's a mathematical representation of the signal, which helps a lot when you are decoding stuff. And after it creates this representation with, as a complex number, it just sends to the computer. So basically, the job of the RTR SDR dongle is done here. Everything else is done in the computer. Like you have the whole spectrum, the turner is a magnifying glass. Yes, pretty much like this. So you just like put a magnifying glass in the position you want to check and you are blind to everything else and just see 
what is the region of interest. So this, this is the this is a simple SDR, but we have another SDRs. So let's talk about uh, what I consider cheap SDRs. I mean, they are not really cheap, uh, especially if you live in Brazil. Uh, everything is expensive here. So, but it's I mean, when I I mean cheap, it's because a long time ago it was like uh, to get an SDR, it was like I think twenty thousand dollars or something like that. So that's expensive. Uh, that's not something everyone can buy, not even with right planning. So the SDRs here, even if you live in Brazil, which is it, it get, can get really expensive here. With some planning, you can buy one. Okay. So we have the RTR SDR, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, there are several generations of it. Uh, basically, it all started with a TV dongle. And someone discovered that you can grab the direct samples from it. You can just ignore the, the TV decoder inside and get everything raw. Because this TV dongle also has an uh, FM radio decoder. But the guy that was reverse engineering how the FM decoder works discovered that the FM decoder doesn't run in the dongle but runs on the PC. Because FM radio is pretty cheap to decode in software. So it's cheaper than creating a hardware for that. So. For FM, it just sends everything to the PC, and then the PC can handle that. So there are several iterations of that. It was improved for uh, SDR operation. So you have like the Gen 6 with uh, LTRSDR.com, which has a lot of improvements for SDR usage. And as I said, it works from 24 megahertz to 1.7 gigahertz. It has a 8-bit uh, ADC, so basically each sample has 8 bits, and it can do 3.2 million samples per second. So it basically that means since it's a 3.2 million samples IQ, which is a complex number, that means you can basically see 3.2 megahertz of spectrum. So remember when I said. You don't need like uh, for a TV channel. You don't need 400 megahertz. You need like one megahertz or two megahertz. So if you shift enough, this SDR works for that. You have, I think, the most known of the the SDRs, mostly because it was the first open source, which is the HackerF from Great Scott Gadgets. This it's pretty old nowadays, uh, but it was the first open source. This is open hardware. You have access to everything. You have firmwares, you have softwares. This also transmits, which is nice. Uh, it works on a very wide spectrum. Here I say 1 megahertz to 6 gigahertz, but you can actually go down to like 100 kilohertz or something like that. It has an 8-bit ADC, so it can receive as, uh, receive samples as 8 bits, and it can transmit as 10 bits. And also can do 20 mega samples IQ, which means 20 megahertz of usable spectrum. Uh, th this is the, the old king of the SDRs. Even nowadays, which is pretty old, I mean, the HackerF probably was done like, I think, 15 or 20 years ago, I, I think it's 15 years or something. It's pretty, it's pretty usage nowadays. And you can get an AliExpress, you can get everything everywhere. So, I mean, th this is one of the kings. Yeah, yeah, your LTR is Realtek. It's a Realtek TV dongle. So. I mean, Realtek does a lot of stuff for network stuff. It does like the network cards, which we all know. It does like radio stuff, which, for example, is the RTR SDR. But yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's Realtek. There is Lime SDR, which is uh, 
I, I, I would say it's um it's the spiritual successor of the Hacker Ref. Uh Hacker Ref has some advantages for some stuff. Lime SD, Lime SDR has from other stuff, but Lime SDR is also everything open source. You have all the firmers, all the softwares. Uh, the chip itself, which is the a transceiver, which is the LMS 7002, it's it has a pretty detailed data sheet. So, I mean, uh, Lime SDR, they are amazing because they really supported the community. And I mean, this board was made for making a, a cellular station, a mobile phone. The, this actually was made for that. But you see, it works from 10 megahertz to 3.5 gigahertz. And it's a full duplex transceiver. So you can trans transmit and receive at the same time. And I, I can't thank them enough because they really supported all my projects, like uh, giving me hardware to test, to improve and everything. So they, they are not only, I mean, not only oh, the great Scott Gadget also helped a lot of the community, but when I went to the SDR world, the Hacker Ref was already there. And Lime SDR came afterwards. So it was like an exchange. I helped them with uh, creating softwares. They have helped me providing hardware and everything like that. So it's a full duplex transceiver. So you can transmit and receive. It has a 12-bit ADC and DAC. So the resolution of the samples are higher than the, the hacker ref. It can do 61.44 mega samples IQ. This weird number is because this is the sample head usually used for mobile networks. The actual sample height of the LMS ship is actually higher. I think, as I recall, it can reach like 200 mega samples per second or even more. But here we have a limitation of the USB port. Okay, so 61.44 is basically the maximum a USB 3.0 can handle. So they, they have another version with a PCI Express version that can go higher. But uh, I mean, the most common one is the USB, and that's why you are limited to that. But being uh, the hardware being faster than that means you can actually get more than 12 bits of resolution because of some mathematical tricks. And you have two transmit channels and two receive channels. So you, it's not only a full duplex, but it's also a MIMO uh, transceiver, which means you ha can transmit two distinct signals and receive two distinct signals. Yeah, 61.44. Point twenty four mega samples are really a lot. I mean, even if the USB 3.0 can handle that, not every computer can handle that. That that's something something uh, people in the early days of the Lime SDR complained that they had defective Lime SDRs because they couldn't reach the sixty one point forty four mega samples. But what the actual the problem was their PCs because. The USB stack runs on CPU. So for receiving that, you load the CPU. Just imagine you are receiving 61.44 mega samples. Each sample has 12 bits, which you can say that's like about 90 megabytes per second, which is pretty much, and you are not stopping sending, you are like, using bulk transfers because it's continuous transfer. So the USB doesn't have any time to like uh, change to other device or anything like that. So it's it's pretty heavy. I mean, it's not every machine that can run 61.44 mega, mega samples. Yeah, I mean, the price is a lot, but not that much. I mean, it costs like $300, uh, which is more accessible than like a USRP or something like that. So, okay, uh, let's talk about signals to receive. Uh, so I showed the SDRs. Uh, for the, all the signals I'm showing here, you can use the cheapest one, which is the RTR SDR, which you can buy for like, I think $30 or 30 something euros, um, which is the cheapest one. But you can also, if you want, get 
the more most expensive one so you can transmit or make your other experiments you can also do that with any of them uh, basically any sdr in the market can receive all the signals i am commenting here so the first one is the NOAA and prime apt signal these satellites are phased out already i mean they are deprecated for I mean, they probably deprecated the APT signal 20 years ago, but the satellites are, some of them are still alive, so you can still receive them. Uh, we don't know how much time they will, they still have, but they, you can still receive that. And th this is, this is simple because you don't actually need an SDR. You just need a VHF radio. And here are some gambiahas I did. So I, I usually don't talk Gambiaras, which is a Brazilian slang for like um, I, th that's some of the words that you can can't translate to English, but it's like a technical workaround. I, I prefer talking about that. So you can see I have on the left side like a KFH antenna, which was the first one I did, which is you can see it's PVC pipes and in cable in the right side i have like a, a antenna i did with two copper pipes and a lunch box with my sdr and my computer on the, on that and it works you know it's pretty easy to receive that because it's vhf you don't need amplifiers you don't need anything you just basically connect the antenna directly to the radio and it works okay and you receive some signal like that. Okay, so this is the image. It's analog, it's not digital. So it has noises. But I mean, this is Brazil. You can see the, the, the coastal shape. If you're not from Brazil, it's probably not very easy to recognize. But if you are from Brazil, you'll probably recognize the co Brazilian coast on the right side. And this is the signal. Uh, it's FM. So if you ra have a FM radio that can reach 127 megahertz, you can hear the satellite passing. You can even see the Doppler and things like that. And there is the, what I would say, the holy grail of the satellite receiving, the GUIS satellite. Uh, if you are in Europe, you can receive, you cannot see Europe. Uh, I mean, in Portugal, there is signal coverage for GUIS 16, but uh, the European satellite is the Meteosat. Uh, Meteosat also use the same protocol and everything, but some stuff is encrypted, encrypted. But everything I'm talking here, you can use for receiving Meteosat as well. So GUIS is a geostationary operating environment satellite. Being geostationary, you can just point your dish and it just works. Uh, you don't need to track the satellite. And, and here, on the left side, there is Antina Luigi, which is one of my friends uh, use it to receive, which is a repurposed Wi-Fi antenna. And the right side, there is my setup, my first setup at, at least, which is a C-band satellite dish, which is ridiculous common in Brazil. You can buy it really cheap in Brazil because people still use this here. And I just changed and just make a modification for receiving in GUIS, band, uh, GUIS satellite, which is 1.6 gigahertz. The can that's attached there is a Neston can. I think you have Neston in Portugal, which is uh, a zero from Nestlé. Uh, it has the right size needed to receive GUIS. Like Pringles, Pringles cans has the exact size to receive Wi-Fi. And Neston cans has for receiving GUIS. Uh, it's funny because I think there is a conspiracy that manufacturer of cans uh, makes uh, cans sized in the right format and shape for uh, radio frequency studies. But nowadays, if you want, I will recommend the new Alec voice kit. I can't stress enough, they are really amazing with the community. They send me one for free. Okay, they are not paying me for that. Uh, I'm just saying because they, their, their kit is really good. Uh, I made a review, so you can see in the left side, there is a link to my YouTube channel. 
If you don't speak Portuguese, there is English uh, closed captions. I translated everything to English closed captions, so it's not auto-generated. I put an English there. Uh, it's it's a really amazing uh, kit. They have been supporting the GUIs community for a long time. They made amplifiers, filters, and everything. And now they made like a complete kit uh, that you have the antenna, you have cables, you have SDR, you have filters. So basically, the only thing you need is a place to fix the antenna, and that's it. You have everything. And my my software that I did, which is open source, already supports everything. So you can just like turn everything on, and it should work. And Nuelec, thanks enough if anyone from Nuelec is watching. Really, thanks for for helping the community and everything, and also for sending me that for testing. Okay, and I mean, you can build your setup, but it's probably better to, if you want to start, just get a kit. If you are in the US, they have an Amazon. Uh, I think Amazon UK also has it, so I'm not sure how easy it is to get to Europe, but the, the, their kit is uh, pretty available. You can also talk to them. They will figure out how to get one. Okay, it's it's uh this dish has about uh, 19 centimeters diameter. It's not very small, but it's the smallest you can get for GUI 16 and Meteosat and things like that. So this is the satellite spectrum from GUI 16. There are several signals. This is from a uh, hacker ref because the hacker ref is the only SDR and the Lime SDR which can see the whole spectrum. The new, you can see there is a lot of signals. This is spans from 1,680 megahertz to 1,696 megahertz. Uh, there are several signals, but we are interested in only one, which is a low bandwidth signal, which is the uh, A-rich. I'm not sure how to talk that in English, which it's H-R-I-T. Uh, which is the signal on the right side. The signal on the left is the telemetry. Uh, we usually short as TLM. Uh, you can also decode it. It's not hard to decode, but there is not much information there. But Adrich has images, which is pretty interesting. Uh, it's pretty easy to decode. I mean, I have I, I made like a whole series about that. There is a written document about how to decode, not from the 16, but from the 13. The 16 is like a bit different. It's a bit wide bandwidth. It sends more data, but the overall concept is the same. And this is the SAT help app, that helper app, which is like the fourth iteration of my of Open Satellite project. It's made in GoLang, and it's open source. The, it, there is a GitHub project. You can get check the source code. This software is complete. Uh, I mean, you just plug the dongle in your USB, put everything, and you start getting images like that. OK, there, there is a several configurations that you can do to change images, but basically, this is what you get. So if you see, you can like uh, see a tip of the Africa in the right side, but sadly, Europe, you can, can't see in the GUI 16. Still, if you are in Portugal or Spain, you can receive it. Uh, it's probably be very close to the horizon, so it depends on where you live, but it's possible to receive its own coverage. But if you can't receive, can't receive like the GUI 16, you can also receive the Meteosat. Uh, the encrypted stuff, of, of course, you can receive, but there are some other images that come. Um, me and a friend added support for Meteosat. It's very experimental because I can't test daily, but feel free to try and let me know if you have any issues about that. Then there, there are several images. This is the thermal image. This is a false spoiler one. Uh, this shows the thermal, so it has a, a thermal scale in the bottom. Yeah, th this is the, the proof that Earth is flat. Th this is flat, you see? I'm receiving flat images from the satellite, so Earth is flat. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. The, the software do the reprojection of the images automatically, but you receive as a spheres. So if you don't believe it, receive it by yourself. 
And there are several um, ways. For example, if you want to decode it yourself, because I mean, it's fun to get a software and start receiving images. But at least for me, I find, uh, find fun to actually understand what's happening under the hood. So what's the best way to know than make it yourself? I mean, that's possible. That, that's not unfeasible. I did. And you can probably, probably do that. So when I did, I was writing everything, every step I did because it was really hard at, at the time. Uh, there are several people that helped me. There will be credits in the next section for them because it was like uh, there were so, several people that helped me with that. So I just compiled everything in, a, I call it a book, which is the Goy Satellite Hunt, which is from Goy's 13, but you can also use for Goy 16, Meteo Sat, and everything. And it has everything from hardware to software. And if you don't, once you build the hardware yourself, you don't want like to start the hardware. And I mean, it, it's not for everyone to set up a hardware to receive guys. You can still try. So what I did is I recorded several um, several data from the ADC. So you can start from the software part, side as you had the software as you had the hardware. So you don't need your hardware, you can just download the file, which is the recording of the SDR, and then you can just start from there and make everything you want, okay? And there's Google Satellite Hunt, there is the link over there. Uh, you can use GNU Radio for that. I mean, the Google Satellite Hunt, there is a lot of mentions from GNU Radio, which helps a lot of software for software-defined radio. You don't need to code anything. You can just put blocks and then start decoding. The image you see in the middle is GNU radio. Okay, is the GUI starting signal. And everything here is done in GNU radio. So you can even do GIS, uh, GIS for showing everything that's happening. So it's it's really it's really nice uh to have everything like that. Yeah, I'm just removing the distortion. This it's pretty much like a GoPro or things like that, because uh, a geostationary satellite can see like a third of the planet's surface. Okay, so basically you need like three satellites to see the whole surface. And so since you see one third, what is it? It's uh, the whole circle of the Earth is visible in the frame. That That's the maximum you can see with a satellite. So what I'm doing is just reprojecting because it's easier to visualize in a map fashion than in the circles fashion. So this is the GUI satellite hunt. Uh, there are several details here. Uh, you can also talk to me if you want uh, about it. It's I really recommend playing with it with because it's really fun. Yeah, Gino Radio takes takes some time to get it started. Uh, I I did a uh, tutorial. I'm still doing actually, call it uh, Set for Noobs, which uh, which has like a uh, Gino Radio tutorials for decoding stuff. So far, the only thing that it has it's a FM radio decoder. Uh, it it's a full tutorial, but it's only FM the radio decoder, which is. Pretty decent. You can hear radio in your sound card using Gino Radio. It's it's good to learn and start learning. Uh, there is any legal limit? No, there there is no for that. At least in Brazil, I can't talk for Portugal, but I think uh, Portugal or Spain. Uh, but I think Europe is is pretty much like Brazil in that sense. So I will talk for Brazil. So if if you want to make sure, just check that. But in Brazil, receiving is not illegal. You don't require any special license to receive anything. Uh, breaking encryption is illegal. Okay, so you if you receive an encrypted radio frequency stuff and it's encrypted and you break it, it's illegal. Uh, but if it's plain text, it's not illegal. They can't do anything. 
So even the radios that receive it, uh, is receiver only, for example, the RTR SDR, it's it only receives it can it can't transmit. This doesn't get regulated by Anatel, which is the same as uh, FCC from the United States or the I think is CE in Europe. Um, you you don't need to regulate that because it's receiving only. So you don't you don't have like any problems receiving. You you only have problems uh, breaking encryption, and even like even breaking encryption, there is some caveats that you can spare. But then it's better to have like have an attorney or anything, uh, so he can ch a lawyer that can check that for you. But uh, there there's some caveats that allows even encryption to be break broken. So uh, also. I have recordings for everything. If you want a recording for a specific satellite, I can see if I can find it. Because if it's a recording, you don't need to care at all. It's just your computer. You do everything by software. So I need to reinforce the great thanks to Nuelec, uh, because they support a lot. Nuelec and Lime Micro is the one is the companies that supported me a lot. In this project, I couldn't say it was possible without them. Uh, the Nike 600, the Andrew back is from Lime Micro, so also him because I, I I just put him especially here because I have direct contact with him and uh, Twitter. And I mean, they launched the Lime SDR Micro, the Lime Net Micro. I just said, oh man, th this is amazing. Can I get one? And he said, okay, sure, and send it me one. And it's customized. It has my name on it. So, uh, I mean, th th these companies make a difference for the community, you know? So I can't stress enough. Uh, they really help. So um, every time you see a post from Lime Micro, Nuelec, give them uh, a share, a like, because they're, they're really supportive of that. There is also user set con with uh, Joe. Joe is one of my mentors for that. Uh, we were talking IRC. He helped me a lot in GUI's satellite reverse engineer because he already did. He had a, a paid software, so he helped me a lot. So I can, I, it wasn't possible without him. There's also Dev Nulling, which in ERC was my beat, I think. Uh, he also helped me a lot. Uh, he still helps me in Twitter and, and see everything. Uh, he sold me a filter. Uh, so I could use it, it was at the time it was really hard to find filters that worked with uh, GUI's frequency nowadays it's it's easier there's also TNT which help it uh, it helps me more recently with FPGA stuff but at that time he helped it a lot in uh, RC for RF stuff and satellite stuff and several other people also Maccabeus and Worms for the game Confi uh, it's it's a, a pleasure to be here talking about that, and there are several other people, Luigi and I. I I, I really bad at names. That's why I hate to do like a section to uh, to give thanks to, because I I'm I'm really bad to, to remember names. So if your name is not here, I'm sorry. Uh, please tell me because I can put there here to next presentation or anything like that. That's how people got, yeah, exactly. People got pre satellite TV uh, in the old days like that because there was no encryption. So you can just get it and that's it. So, and uh, that's it. Um, any questions? Why are why I read questions? Here is the links. I do live streams at Twitch. Uh, nowadays, they are also streaming through YouTube. There is my website, which is lucasdesk.dev. Uh, you can find links for all my social networks there. GUI Satellite Hunt is also there. You can go to, there is a satellite project section. You can find everything there. There is also my YouTube channel, which has the new ELEC review and several other stuff. There is also the Telegram group for hardware hacking. Uh, so if you're Portuguese speaker or not, I mean, we 
the the group is Brazilian, but we talk in English as well. There, there's no problem. And that's it. Any 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 questions? Hey, Tess. Uh, hey. I think you answered most of the questions. Uh, we are right yeah. on time for, for Castillo's talk, but if it, you can just hang around in the chat or or people join. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I, I I will be in the chat. So but thanks a lot. The anyone... talk was amazing. <laughs> it's so much content that you'll we'll never find anywhere. I think. <laughs> yeah. And, and also I had to shorten because it's not much time to talk about it. It's a lot of stuff. So no, but I it's... think it's nice. You made very, very nice overviews and also some dives. <laughs> it was a great talk. Thanks. And yeah, well, we'll ask now for Castillo then. Uh, if you can help me, Tom, make the change or, or Bruno. Thanks, Tess, sure. again. <laughs> See you, guys.